always asks me how I actually got into it. I technically studied to be a professional ballet dancer. Um, but then I, long story short, I didn't have the right body type. I was always considered like too fat and it was just such a hectic complex. And somehow in my life, I ended up working in the jewelry industry. And um, I have a certificate to um, gray diamonds and everything. Um, and in my job, I run the manufacturing and the after sales and also the procurement of diamonds. Oh. Um, and I also sometimes do client valuations, so I have to assess the diamonds. Um, we estimate the color and quality of it um, if the clients don't have certificates for it. Um, so it's all very much based on a scale of color. And when it comes to diamonds, you start from colorless, which is D, and you move all the way down till they can go like Z, but you don't usually judge that. From then onwards, it's like, like a yellow diamond. Okay, um, sure. And depending on where you are on the scale of the color gradient, um, the value of the diamond differs. Uh, but I often tell people that the most important thing for me would always be the clarity of the diamond. Yes. Because you don't want to see huge black marks in your diamond. You need it to be clean. Crystal clear. Exactly. I like that. Well, Michaela, we are baking it up in the kitchen today. So on social media, we want to find out from you if you could only eat one baked treat for the rest of your life, what would it be? Remember to include that hashtag Afternoon Express in all of your comments. Coming up, Chef Dumi bakes blueberry ginger biscuits and then we're making a delicious cupcake recipe with Michaela. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, where we are sticking to the baking theme. Now, color is all around us. It inspires us, lifts our moods, and transforms the space. And when it comes to creating beautiful dishes, color is life. We've asked our very own chef, Dumi, how color inspires her cooking while she creates delicious blueberry ginger biscuits. Do 
Melo Chumi Mukhoi, resident chef on Afternoon Express. I'd like to think my inspiration to becoming a chef started way back when I was watching my mom in the kitchen making all those delicious recipes. You know, she would take three, four, five ingredients and it creates something that was so amazing. And I started my journey about a couple of years ago. 2013 to be exact is when I decided to become a chef. And since then, it hasn't been a smooth ride, but it has been quite a fun one. Nothing brings more color to my life than my little one, Bushokwa, and his favorite color happens to be blue. And today we're gonna to be making delicious gingerbread cookies with a touch of blueberry because he loves blue. So why not get started? I start off with a little bit of flour. I've got an array of spices as well as some sugar, some butter and some golden syrup. Let's get started. So we're going in with our flour, baking soda, a pinch of salt, and then we've got our spices. Being a chef on Afternoon Express has got to be one of the most exciting things I've done in the last couple of years. I mean, getting to meet all these amazing people from celebrities to musicians, and of course, those chefs I've always wanted to work with. The next step to our recipe is melting together some sugar, butter, as well as some golden syrup. All you want here is just for the sugar to dissolve. Now that our caramel mixture has cooled down, it's time to incorporate it into our flour mixture. Food to me is a love language. Being able to express myself by feeding people because food is joy, I think. More than anything, it's just being able to express myself and feed people, make people happy. You've been wondering when the color goes in. Well, this is the perfect time. I've got some blueberries over here that I'm just gonna puree beautifully together. And then this will be the color for our gingerbread cookies. Some is gonna go into the cookies and some on the icing. To get the color, all we need is a third of our dough, which goes in here, and just a touch of the blueberry that we just blended. Everyone knows that you eat with your eyes first, and that's where color comes in. Because when you look at a plate and it just is bland in color, then you obviously think that it's gonna be bland in taste. So that's why it's important to always have those different vibrant colors, because it makes people wanna have that plate of food. Here comes the fun, the gingerbread man. And these go into the oven to bake at 190 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes, but also it all depends on your oven. My favorite type of food to cook has got to be homey, hearty, warm food, you know, like love on a plate. My color inspiration for Plascon today has got to be all the colors, but in particular, it has to be the pastel colors. You know, those light, bright, very airy colors, nothing too deep and hectic. I like those colors, and today I chose my son's favorite, which is blue. He loves blue, so I've decided to incorporate some blueberries into his gingerbread biscuits. This is the very fun part, and I'm actually glad Bushokwa's not here, because if he was here, there'd be a lot more color in the house and on the cookies. So what I have here is I have our icing that I've made a little earlier. All I've got here is some royal icing, and I'm gonna divide this into three because we wanna color each of them in a different shade of blue. To start it off, I'm gonna add one third into our first bowl, and then just keep adding a third into the rest of these, and then start coloring. that cooking gives me has got to be somewhat of a dopamine release you know when you feel so excited about everything in life yes it gives me somewhat of a high in life being able to you know the pressure that comes with it coming up with new recipes coming up with new dishes just trying to put all those flavors together it's just so exciting gingerbread cookies check icing check now the fun begins the trick here is to make sure that your icing is not too runny but if it is just lick your fingers what I love most about being a chef is being able to create, being able to create a plate of food. You know, just like art, you know, when a, an artist paints something, gives you a beautiful mural or something of that sort. For me, that's what cooking is like, getting cre to create something amazing, using color, just like you would if you're using Plascon. That for me is exactly what cooking is about, just being able to create art, but on a plate. I know this is meant for the little ones, but I'm having so much fun. It's bringing out the little kid in me because I get to do so many different patterns and different colors.
Voila, Dumi, very beautiful. Your decorating skills are on point. Valessa, I am uh, quite a bit of a baker when it comes to simple things, but I also know that I need some skills here and there, and that's why Michaela's here. <laughs> Absolutely, Asha in Michaela to save the day. So Michaela, finally, the aprons are on and we are ready to get baking. Yes, we are. I'm looking forward to it. Well, are you looking for a reason to celebrate? Well, look no further, as we have the perfect recipe for you. Michaela is in our kitchen today to give us the perfect baking masterclass and she'll be showing us how not only to make cupcakes but to decorate them as well. Now Michaela I am ready what do we need? So these are the ingredients we need for the base. You guys already have prepped bases yeah. and prepped icing and then it's going to be a dual off to see who can do them the best but the slowest. But okay. yeah. Because okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have a while to like do this okay. so go slow guys and just make the best of it. Okay. Do me, this is a challenge. Are you up for a challenge? I'm up for it. I'm up challenge for it. accepted. Challenge accepted, yes. So as, as you are creating this delicious soft base, now in our interview earlier, you promised us that you have this foolproof recipe to ensure that the bun, the, the actual sponge of the cake is delicious every single time. So as Dumi and I do get to uh, decorating our cupcakes, what do we need to create that delicious um, foolproof sponge? So this is the sponge cake I use for everything. Um, sorry to anyone who's eaten my baked goods. Now you know what goes into it. Uh, we have some all-purpose flour, always the way to go. We have some caster sugar, some baking powder, some vanilla essence, oil, which helps to add the soft texture to the bake. Mm. We have some eggs, four of them, and some boiling water. And the way we start this recipe, I'm just gonna move the sieve onto the stove top. It's not on. Uh, we are going to separate our eggs into whites and yolks. Most essential part of the recipe. Okay, so why is this so important to be able to separate that egg? Uh, the separation of the egg allows for the white to create that soft fluffy texture that you want. One thing that's very important that I want to know that I've always wanted to know, you said we're making vanilla cupcakes right now. Yes. So what makes a vanilla cupcake vanilla? Is it the icing or is it the sponge? Ah, uh, it's the sponge all the way. I'm a lazy baker when it comes to cleaning. Okay. Okay, so this is how I do it. I always whip the egg whites first. Uh, we're gonna skip that step for now because someone <laughs> did it for me. Well done. <laughs> okay, brilliant. So essentially, Kitchen you'd, fairy. you'd whip all that egg white up into those beautiful, soft, exactly. um, airy peaks. Okay. Yes. And then I wouldn't even bother washing my um, beater, <laughs> <laughs> my beaters. You just put it directly into your bowl okay. and start off slow so that the sugar doesn't go everywhere. Mm. And once it's combined, turn up the speed and you'd want to keep whisking this until it goes light and fluffy. So it's almost like a Genoese where you beat everything with the eggs, like that's where you get your rise in it, okay. mostly from your eggs. So you try and whip in as much air as possible. See, and it's going like a lighter color. Yeah, I can definitely see it changing slowly but surely. And when you did start this recipe, you mentioned that everything is room temperature. Yes. And the only thing that wasn't room temperature was also warm water. So why is it so important to make sure that all of your ingredients before you start is room temperature? Uh, so with eggs, you always need them at room temperature because it changes the formula and the structure of the integrity of the egg. Um, you'll find that if you use an egg that comes directly from the fridge um, and you add that to a mixture, mm. it doesn't quite beat as well uh, because obviously now you've frozen the molecules in it. So you need it to settle down to a point where it's nice and workable again. Okay. Okay, so you get to this beautiful light. I see. Yeah. And what you'd want to do is then scrape down the sides of the bowl. That's always an essential part when it comes to baking. Scrape down the sides and mix it back into the center because you don't want any lumps, any yeah. like anything that hasn't been properly incorporated to sit on the sides of the bowl because when you're then baking it, you're gonna have these spots of like egg that oh, no. should have been mixed into. So it has to be very smooth. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we have that beautiful mixture now. And then what you'd want to do is 
I like this recipe you can just throw. I know some people tend to like to gradually add things. Mm. No one has time for that. <laughs> okay, you okay. can pour it in. <laughs> okay, so you just, you throw all the all-purpose flour in nice. to your sieve and three semi-heaped-ish baking, mm -hmm. t uh, teaspoons of baking powder. And you're just gonna give that a sieve into the bowl. So we're gonna take half um, cup of whichever vegetable oil or canola oil you prefer using. I usually do canola because I like to think it's a little bit healthier. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and also I find it's the most neutral in flavor oil, uh, okay. which is always something that I like. I'm very aware of oil flavors. Mm. So as much as everyone loves vi extra virgin olive oil, I can't handle the flavor. And not for everything, hey. You yeah, not, be for, able not to for baking, please. Okay, on the decorating station, we're pretty much done, ne, Dumi? Ooh. I think we are, Bali. And on that are. note, I mean, when, when the cameras zoom in to see the amazing masterpiece that I have made <laughs> and what I've done, you might be wondering, how did I make sure that my icing was pliable for me to create the P for Bali and the AE for Afternoon Express, and that's because I used some milk. Now, what's amazing about milk is that if you add it into your icing mixture, it just makes that icing a little bit more workable. Yeah. Um, it, it thins it out a little bit more, and that's what I'm here for, making it voila, perfect. That looks very beautiful, Balissa, but then if you look over on my side Whoa. over here. Whoa, hectic. <laughs> I decided to go all in. I mean, we're doing blue. Before we get into that, I think, Michaela, you've added a very important step into that batter. So uh, we mixed the oil and the boiling water together. Okay. Um, and then once it's combined, it's quite a, like a, it's not a very dense mixture. Yeah. Um, and it, it looks a little bit runny. Uh, which is what you want. Because when you start folding in the egg whites, you don't want a mixture that's so heavy it condenses mm. the egg whites and basically destroys the structure that you've tried to build by whipping them. Mm. Um, so now you gently fold them into the mixture and always scoop from the edges of the bowl inwards. And then I always like to do a figure of eight. Ah. So outwards, figure of eight, eight in, and you just want to combine those egg whites. And the most important tip when it comes to the egg whites is you don't want to whip them to a point where they start to split too much um, because that also decreases the integrity of the cupcakes when you're baking them. It, it makes for very flat, uh, um, almost like you get that hollow in the cupcakes, which is not what you want. Okay. So just like that, it seems as if, if we do continue to make sure all of our ingredients are incorporated quite well, Michaela has already ushered us all the way to the finished product. As soon as that batter is done, she puts it into the tray. She gets a little one, two, one, two, making sure that there are no air bubbles. In the oven for 180? 180 degrees Celsius for, I tend to like to eye it. Okay. So when it comes to ovens, they're all different. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, do it for 15 minutes and actually your oven is a lot hotter. Yeah. Uh, and then you take it out and they've actually reached a point where they've overbaked. So make so sure you, you keep your eye on it yes. the entire time, put it in the center and who knows, maybe yours will be done in a matter of no time. But don't worry, to get this recipe, head over to afternoonexpress.co.za for the full ingredients list. Get an insurance quote for your home or car and stand a chance to win one of eight Samsung Galaxy S21 phones plus 100 gigs of standard bank mobile data for a year. To enter, SMS the keyword MOTOR to 31492 to get a call back and quote. And you could be a winner.
afternoon express. Now, Michaela, I'm not much of a master baker, but that's where you come in. You give me way too much credit. <laughs> People who watch this are going to be like, she has no abilities at all. <laughs> no, Just well, kidding. it's safe to say that the proof is in the pudding, and that's exactly what we're about to get into. Crisp and creamy custard slices are a treat on any day of the week. So today, you are in for a double treat as we're making clover custard slices with a choice of not one, but two delicious toppings. Do me. Asha us, girl. I will usher you in, Balissa, because this starts with a beautiful custard base. Any custard slice starts with those custard bases, and we're going to start off by adding some milk into our uh, pot, Balissa. The first step is to add at least half of your milk. We're going to be using clover fresh milk here. Mm. And the one thing I love about clover milk, Balissa, is the fact that it stays fresh for up to 18 days, so at least Ooh. you know your custard slices are good for the next 18 days. What I want here is I want my milk to heat up to a certain temperature. Once it's warm enough, I'm going to start incorporating all the other ingredients and those ingredients are some sugar we've also got we're using caster sugar because it just dissolves much easier and then I'm also using some custard powder this time and I know we've got a baker over here and she was telling me that I would make creme pat from scratch and creme uh -huh. <laughs> And this is, would be the custard sauce itself from scratch, right? You yes. You're making it yourself from scratch. 100%. But now we're finding an easier way out, and that's just use, making the custard using custard powder, Balissa, which is simple and easy. Okay, and I think a lot of people do have custard powder mm. at home. A lot of people love that, you know, the labor of love, <laughs> labor of love that it is to make your custard from scratch. But for some of us that are all for convenience, do me, would I just be able to use store-bought yeah. um, instant custard? Definitely. That's also an option, Palace, and if you were to do that, then the only difference is that you can add a bit of corn flour into that. Okay. But the whole idea is we want to show you how easy it is to incorporate your clover milk into this beautiful recipe. I don't have much of a sweet tooth, but I do love a good custard slice. And being able to couple quite beautifully and, and perfectly, essentially, that clover fresh milk. I mean, you just get that superior quality mm -hmm. with every liter that helps you give your family nothing but the best. Thanks to its triple protect. Definitely, by the side, is that triple protect that we've got over here. And another twist we're adding to our recipes, instead of using puff pastry or using a cracker or, uh, or anything of that sort, we're actually using a cheese cracker that's going to be the base oh. of our, um, our custard slices. And the reason for that is we want that beautiful flavor that, in essence, a bit of a saltiness that's going to mix pair perfectly with this, um, uh, the custard flavor that we've got. It's time now for me to add the mixture that I've got here with our clover fresh milk and some of our milk that we've got in here. When you do heat up your milk in the pan, it, in the pot, it is important not to make it boil because you want to be able to incorporate the rest of it here. And then you're going to increase the heat. And because it already has corn flour in it, it is also very important to keep whisking until it thickens up to the correct uh, consistency that you like. Okay. And gorgeous, on my side, you know, Dumi, you have given me the task of making sure that we get the lemon juice out of here. Yeah. So to get my lemon juice, you know, just take the week's frustrations Ish. out. But it's the beginning of the week, so there ain't no frustrations, nothing but joy. So I can say, oh, almost too much joy because already the, the, the juice <laughs> just comes out of the And this is what I'm looking for. The effortless, effortless when it's time to get that juice out. And I'm glad you went that way. That's one of the toppings you're making. So your uh, topping, Michaela, uses some lemon juice and some icing sugar. Basic. You know, like, in the good old days when you used to go down to the shops with your mm -hmm. parents and you used to pick up a custard slice in, in the shops? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It would always just be icing sugar with, like, a little bit of lemon juice in oh, it. And then okay. it gets that, like, set outside, but still a little bit soft on the inside. Yes. That's kind of what this is going to end up being. And, Balissa, we've chosen to use your topping for today's custard slices. As you can see, as it goes into the fridge to set, even the, cut, the, the condensed milk mixture that you're making for us now also sets beautifully beautifully, but still has this luscious sweetness mm. that we're very shocked Should of I our Should I put all of the condensed milk? You saw Always. how much lemon juice. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, you saw how much lemon juice I got out of that lemon. I've got quite a bit. So making sure that um, at the end of the day, those flavors, nothing is overwhelming the other. And guys, as you can see, this custard is already, it's already thick. Perfectly. Yeah, it's already thick. It's about time for me to start lining that, um, that dish you've got for us. So Michaela, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the custard and then you'll just add the final layer on top for us. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Where would you stuff. like me to so put I'm this just going to pour over here. 
Okay. And that's our custom oh, set, Balissa. It's nice and hot. Wow. And nice and smooth, which is important. The whisking is important for this specific step to make sure there are no lumps, there are no, there's nothing in there. It's nice and That smooth. was some perfectly uh, whisked custard right there. And on that note, while you're putting that final layer of crackers, my topping is also pretty much done. And just like that, to get this recipe, head over to afternoonexpress.co.za for the full ingredients list. with love by clover Michaela, as we are putting that last layer of our custard slice what should we remember when it comes to getting this right every time uh, perhaps let the custard set before you put the topping on <laughs> but you know we just went for it so <laughs> but not only the wittiness but also the flavor in the kitchen i'm looking forward to trying that but when we do return we've got a finger chocolate cacao biscuit recipe that you don't want to miss Welcome back to the loft. Now, Tumi, we're still sticking to the baking theme. Definitely, Balissa, and now we're doing something that's very nostalgic. Oh, I love that for you. Now, there are tastes that evoke a sense of home in people. They often exchange through food creations, a bite, a sip, a smell in the air. A sense of home and belonging are complex emotions, especially when you're living away from home. Now, there's that feeling that all the cravings that have the little reminders and the little things that you miss, especially when it comes to your favorite 
foods. So today, Dumi and I will be creating something that she has always had in her home, something that she literally cannot go without when it comes to tea time, and that's some chocolate finger cookies. Dumi, those look delicious. Balasa, they definitely look delicious, and they're reminding me so much of home. And we're using our Rama original today to make these beautiful biscuits, Balasa. If there's something that reminds me of home, it has got to be the smell of baking. And yeah. it is perfect that we've chosen this one because I'm trying to, you know, transfer this tradition to my son so that it becomes something that we sort of do together at home, you know, because of the memories, because of the taste, because of just the moments that you create whenever you have such dishes. And how's he doing so far? Yeah, Palisa, <laughs> he's definitely winning in that department. <laughs> So, Balasa, what we're starting off with here is I've got some of our Brahma that I've just cut and put into our, our bowl here. And the first step would be to cream our Brahma and our sugar together. The reason for this is that we want to lighten up our mixture and make sure that it's nice and soft um, and allow for all the ingredients to incorporate together. So all we're going to do is just put all these ingredients together. I've also got some vanilla essence. I've got some cocoa powder. I've got some baking uh, powder that's also going to go into our mixture. And then we're just going to bind it with the flour. And you know, the one thing I love is that you're going to get that beautiful, rich, creamy, uh, decadent flavor that comes from the Rama that we're going to add. And then you're just going to add the beauty to this recipe. Yep. I'm beautifying everything in the kitchen today. So um, Udumi has got me on chocolate station, which I do not mind because this <laughs> chocolate looks, smells delicious. It's some dark chocolate, ne, Udumi? Yes. Quite intense. Quite intense in flavor. And you've also chopped up some nuts for me, and this is essentially just going to be the dip. You know, um, the tip of those cookies have that little chocolate dip. That is essentially what it is. And I suppose the nuts just add that extra crunch. Yes, Balissa, that's what we want. We always talk about texture. And you know, one thing I used to do back in the days when we made these biscuits, there was never that idea that you have to have uh, texture and crunch. They were yeah. always just nice and smooth. So I decided as we keep going, as the years go, let's find ways to, you know, zhuzh up our recipes. And that's why we've decided to add that bit of chocolate on the uh, on the side, as well as some cho um, chopped nuts in there. So, Pali, I've creamed my sugar and butter together. The whole idea is just to make sure it's a nice com uh, combined mixture. And then from here, I'm gonna start creaming the rest of our ingredients together. I'm gonna add our vanilla essence into this. So it's gonna help loosen this mixture that I've got here as well. And then into this, I'm adding a little bit of ice cold water. I literally had ice in this water just to help bind everything together. And then I'm gonna add the dry ingredients into this. They've already been sifted together. Mm. What I love about what Rama is doing um, today, not only with this recipe, but just in general, is that it's taking us all the way back to our childhood, mm -hmm. I mean, there are so many scents, tastes, and smells that remind me and just evoke that sense of home. You know, Durban is where my heart is, and they do say home is where the heart is. So <laughs> I can just imagine walking into a home, smelling these delicious Ooh. chocolate finger cookies. Ah. Oh. Love it. Love it for us, Balissa. So I've just mixed together my dry ingredients. In here, I've got my uh, cocoa, cocoa powder, I've got my baking powder, and I've got my flour. And then into this, I'm just going to incorporate the rest of these ingredients here. Do you want to just, may I ask you just to pass me a spatula, Definitely. just so I can fold these ingredients together, Bali? And then, in essence, all we want is a nice, firm dough, because we're creating biscuits. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to be runny, you want it to be nice and firm, allowing you to roll it to whatever cons um, a thickness that you prefer. In this instance, we don't want them too thick because they are going to have a bit of a rise once they go into the oven. And then we're going to just try and work them down mm. and let them cool down. And then they're obviously going to dip again after that. So, Pali, I'm just slowly incorporating our ingredients there. How's the chocolate looking on your end? Absolutely beautiful. It's definitely melting down quite thoroughly. I mean, this double boiler is hot, hot, hot. <laughs> the Udumi had already got the hot water going at the bottom. And then she put just that glass container, the glass bowl Correct. on top. And that's essentially what is holding the chocolate, making it be able to not burn, mm -hmm. but still melt down completely, which is iconic. Um, Dumi, talk to me again about why specifically are we using Rama Original in this recipe? Because of the flavor that it brings, Balisa, because of the memories that it brings, because yeah. of, you know, the, the moments that you share whenever you think of such recipes. Um, I want to quickly just give my hands a bit of a wash, and then I'm going to come back to this um, just now. On my station here, I decided not to use all of the the chocolate because essentially some of this chocolate I can believe I can just sprinkle on top make yes. it look super 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 cute and now that your hands are clean is that the beginning stage before it goes into that correct so what I'm doing here Pala says I'm just rolling out our dough to a nice thick consistency or a nice thick um, um, dough and then I'm just gonna use a, a knife the whole only thing I'm trying to do here is I want to cut them into nice little um, 
batons, if I would say. Mm. So all I'm doing here, I'm not even going to cut through and put it uh, and, and separate them. You just cut them and you're going to bake them as is. Because once you take them out of the oven, they're going to uh, break away easily. Okay. So you don't even have to worry about that. If you do have a worry about them sticking together, then you can split them. But I think, why not? You know, just leave them as is. I know they look very rustic, but this is the whole idea. It's a very childlike recipe that yeah. you can do with your kids, that you can do with your family. These go into bake for 12 minutes. Come out looking beautiful. Decorate them with that beautiful chocolate. Hams. Would you like to taste, Bali? I would love to have a taste of sure. one of those. I'm loving the fact that we're using something that is so versatile. That is the Rama original. It's available in the tub and brick format, making things so easy and so convenient in your household. Our Rama is also just a much-loved South African brand that has been present in our households for generations. So, Minangiti, cheers to that. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yes. I love that, Dumi. That cocoa flavor is definitely coming through. I, I'm glad you're enjoying them, Palace. I hope it reminds you of home as well. Mm. <laughs> definitely make your meat dance. It's these meals made with love and Rama that family away from home remember fondly. To get your hands on this recipe, please do visit afternoonexpress.co.za and taste the love with Rama wherever you go. Now listen up, because this is something you do not want to miss. Rama is giving away a grocery voucher to the value of 800 Rand once a week for 13 weeks. To kickstart week one this, of this amazing competition, tell us what special meal with memories come to mind when you think of Rama on the Afternoon Express Show's Facebook or Twitter pages with the hashtag Rama Taste the Love. And you can stand a chance of winning a grocery voucher to the value of 800 Rand. This week's competition closes at midday on Monday, the 13th of September. T's and C's do apply and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. Wherever food is made with love, you'll find Rama. Taste the love. The weather is warming up and we've got the perfect refresher headed your way as we make candy floss mocktails. Stay tuned. Our pharmacies are on the front line of healthcare. This is Pharmacy of the Week. So I've worked in small chain pharmacies uh, for the last 29, 30 years. Uh, in back pain, yes, it's a community. A lot of people know a lot of people. We all know each other. I've been having customers which I've been dealing with since I was first qualified. As a health professional, I like to be able to do what I can to help the people. At the end of the day, one does not want to risk ourselves. I don't want to risk my staff unnecessarily. So we have a sign outside that if people do think they may be COVID positive or in contact, so that they can rather uh, try to be safe and rather stay outside. And then we will come out to them. We will assist them. They can go wait in their car. And then we will actually process the claim. That way we're not endangering other staff members or other customers. We will try to do that as much as possible. Being brave is our families who we're leaving at home and they have to be brave for us because I mean we're always in contact with the people. Pharmacy of the Week, proudly brought to you by Adcock Ingram OTC, sponsors of Brave.
back to Afternoon Express. We're finally Dumi. We're going to end the show off on a very refreshing note. Vanessa, we need to quench our thirst. We've been working way too hard today. Here for it. <laughs> now, spring has sprung, and it is the perfect time for a refreshing taste time out. And what better way to celebrate than with a refreshing, rejuvenating Manhattan Candy Floss Mocktail to put a spring in your step. Now, Dumi, mm -hmm. I'm jumping for a reason. Let's do it, Balissa. How do you like <laughs> What do we need? Right into it, Balissa. All we need for our beautiful drink, we've got some raspberries. We're also going to use some mint because we need that freshness. And the best thing about this is that all the flavor that we need for this uh, drink of ours is in our Manhattan iced tea, Balissa. I'm using pineapple. What's your favorite? I've got a pineapple here, and I am a pineapple girl. That is my favorite flavor. What's your favorite flavor? What do you have? Oh, this one's blackcurrant. Yeah. Yeah. Pineapple is <laughs> And what I'm so obsessed with when it comes to this Clover Manhattan iced tea is that it's the best way to experience ultimate refreshments and relaxation. I can just see myself, you know, on a little bit of an mm. island because at the end of the day, this Clover Manhattan iced tea comes in the black tea flavor, green tea, and rooibos tea flavors. Uh, they've got flavor variants galore. And today we're making use of my favorite mm -hmm. here, the, ice, the, the, the pineapple iced tea flavor. Love that, Palissa. So what you guys already have on your station is the puree that I'm about to have, which included the mint, the raspberries, and the sauce, and our beautiful Clover Manhattan iced tea. So all we do is start with the ice. Like any drink that you make, I'd like to think you start with the cold part first because you want to make sure it's nice and refreshing. We do our ice part first, and then you can go in with a couple of raspberries now or some at the top. It's completely up to you. Mm -hmm. I'll add maybe first two now. I also like to add my mint in there because it looks beautiful with that color. Yeah. And then add I'm your all the Actually, Actually, I'm going to take some powder. ice bits out because sometimes oh. I love my... <laughs> 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 that all went in there, girl. Yeah, you might as well just uh, keep going with it. In fact, if I were you, I would add some extra goodness by yeah. adding yes. that iced tea. Add a little dollop of clover Manhattan iced tea. Boop, boop. I mean, it's made in natural tea extract. Mm -hmm. And for this candy floss mocktail, you can use any flavor that you want. Today, I said my fa favorite flavor my mouth is salivating from this favorite flavor is the pineapple. But here yeah, you'll be using the black currant as well. So that's also good to go. I'm not really a fan of pineapple. I think it's because it, when you eat the fresh kind, it gives you that numb mm. tongue ah, feeling. Yeah. That, that scares me. Yeah, a lot of people say that that's good for you though, Domi. Is it? I know it, it is good for you. It's got some properties that actually help, especially for women. I know that it's been told it's something that actually helps even with the tightening of the skin, apparently. Wow. Balissa. So eat pineapple. It is good for you. And this is how your, your mocktail should look, Bailey. I don't know about yours. Make sure the, the candy floss doesn't touch the liquid, otherwise it will disintegrate. <laughs> this is looking so beautiful, Bailey. This seems like a science experiment right now. <laughs> <laughs> Voila! I'm look actually quite proud. Going. Oh, <gasps> they, did you see how that disintegrated? Well, cheers to us, ladies. Cheers. cheers. I'm going to give it a taste and good luck to me. How does one even taste this? <laughs> you take it off again. <laughs> No, actually, because it's candy floss, oh. let's let the candy floss go in there. It oh, was it's just actually for the not very sweet. Not at so all. So the candy floss is a perfect addition then. Correct. Hey, Bo. Boop, boop. Mm. Yum, Nandi's puzzle. <laughs> this is delicious. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I could mm. be eating this and drinking it all evening long. Now, to get in on this action, mm. head over to our website for the full ingredients list. So, we've had classic fashion from Timby. Classic cars, thanks, Chad. And we've seen classic hairstyles. And you, Michael? <gasps> classic. A classic range from Clover. Timeless taste. Made with love by Clover. We've reached our favorite part of the show where we get to indulge in all the sweet treats made on today's show. Ladies, let's dig in. But Michaela, before we destroy this beautiful mess, what did we make? <laughs> we made some super colorful vanilla cupcakes, uh, some delicious, easy to make at home custard slices, and some delicious chocolate cacao mm. biscuits. Love that. To me, these look incredible. Now, I know you are a fan of all the sweet things in mm -hmm. life. Myself, I'm like 
pushing my boundaries here, but in the best way possible. So I'm gonna go with something that's a bit of a safe bet for me, which is my answer actually to the social media questions, which was, if you could only eat one baked good for the rest of your life, what would it be? And my answer would have to be a custard slice. Really? Yep, I do. I love a good custard slice, so I'm actually just gonna do this. <laughs> nice. I love custard slice. For yourself, Thank Michaela? You. Um, so my favorite baked good is actually one that I make myself, and I don't know if that's like a weird thing to say, but it's a banoffee cake Ooh. with like chewy caramel in between and banana. It's yeah. like... Oh, so Moorish. That sounds and yours decadent. I um, you know, you know me, I love my chocolate brownie. Ooh. So for me, it'll have to be a chocolate brownie. In day in, day out, I love me some chocolate. Mm -hmm. How's that custard slice, Bali? <laughs> wow. Oh, it's got I a zing. Mm -hmm. mm. I literally was about to talk about that zing. That lemon that y'all saw me squash up and take all my frustrations out, I definitely can taste it. It is delicious. It gives that refreshing little tang at mm. the end, and I'm definitely here for it. Um, so this is also, I think that this is a crowd pleaser for all South Africans. I'm loving mm. the fact that cheese cracker is making a huge difference to it. It's nice and soft and it just mellows together with mm. the flavors of the lemon and the custard itself. It actually is quite delicious. Yeah, I'm actually not gonna even move on to anything else. <laughs> I'm just gonna stick right here. <laughs> now, Michaela, I just wanna dig a little deeper into the woman behind the apron. Now, you have got so many interesting elements. We can go on for days and days. Not only are you a diamond specialist, but you also have a very interesting pet. Oh, do you guys know about it? <laughs> yeah. I, I have the best about? pet ever. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a crested gecko. And um, so I named it before I knew what gender it was. And now it's come out that it's a she. Mm. And her name is Cedric. And she's <laughs> super cute. Mm -mm. Like... Mum, <laughs> 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 So I'm the type of person... So, Born and raised in Durban, we had geckos everywhere. My entire family knows before I enter any room, <laughs> before I sleep in any room, I need my entire family to do a full sweep. Mm. I'm like, I go, everyone, has everyone done a sweep? <laughs> Go in there, have a look at every corner, because I can't stand Gekko. That's like a Ooh! She's different though. She's gonna get like really big. How big? That's the problem. Big. That's <laughs> not the issue. <laughs> what do you mean this, this is different? So you just love your little pet chameleon gecko vibes. Mm -hmm. I, I can't. I'm never visiting you ever. <laughs> Um, do me. What do you have to say about this? Well, I'm actually, I like the fact that she's thinking out <laughs> the box with a, a pet that's not your normal pet. But like I said, me and Mam Tigilish forever. Back in the day, we used to chase uh, chase them around the guys. So I'm not so sure about. Yeah, you probably won't have yeah. pets like Palace and I. But not so sure she about lives in a terrarium. Okay, you guys won't even have to touch her. She's just there. She's an ornament. She sleeps like 15 hours a day anyway. Sure. Okay. And on that note, as we close the chapter, Michaela, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Mm, it's always a pleasure. Do me. My mouth is you know when it's good. <laughs> we can't even talk. We're just busy eating. We're chewing. Okay, anyway, thank you so much. It's always been such a pleasure. Do me. All the recipes are amazing. Now we're sizing it up with big bakes with a chef with big personality or chef chart. Catch all of that on Thursday from 5.30 p.m. But until then, Mzanti, good night, stay safe, and happy eating. Goodbye. Here's to the season of sunny breakfasts, healthy lunch breaks in the great outdoors, and romantic sunset dinners made with love by Clover.